Uh, the injuries, again, as stated yesterday, range from uh, pretty significant head injuries uh, to many orthopedic uh, injuries, including arms and legs, uh, lots and lots of fractures, uh, chest trauma, uh, lots of uh, pulmonary injuries. Uh, and so there's a long uh, road to recovery for many of the patients who are in our facility. Uh, we did transfer two patients yesterday to higher level of care uh, into Boston. Uh, I don't have an update on their condition, uh, but otherwise the patients that we have now, uh, most are, are doing okay, a couple in guarded condition, uh, but at this point would expect them all to survive. Uh, with me is Dr. Millam, who's our uh, chair of surgery and Dr. Tolufson, who's our EMS medical director. Uh, Dr. Tolufson was on scene uh, yesterday uh, at the event, and Dr. Millam was uh, with me at the hospital managing the patients as they arrived here. So happy to take any questions. Just how, how traumatic, how tough has this been on your staff when you care about your people as well as your patients? Uh, I'll, I'll start. I mean, I have to say our team is really proud of what was accomplished yesterday. Uh, we, uh, we do train for this. This is uh, something that we don't ever want to happen, but we prepare for. Uh, we drill mass casualty events with frequency. And so yesterday, everybody went into the mode of preparing for and caring for patients as they arrive. Uh, I'll speak for the team, but our team did an um, absolutely amazing job yesterday. We were uh, never uh, unable to manage any patient who arrived. Uh, we had uh, full teams available for every single patient who arrived. Uh, 17 of those patients arrived in 47 minutes. Uh, five of them were in extreme critical nature. The rest of them had uh, various injuries. Uh, very few of them were minor injuries. Uh, most of them were quite significant. Um, uh, and. Dr. Tolson can talk about the scene, but it was a pretty, uh, this was a very intense, uh, tra tragic event. Yeah, sure. <clears throat> um, I'd just say, like to say I'm extremely proud of uh, all the responders on scene. Um, uh, as you reported previously, it was rather chaotic on scene on arrival, but very quickly became a very efficient triage, immediate treatment, stabilization, and transport operation. Um, very proud of the capabilities of South Shore Hospital, the ability to absorb all these patients seamlessly. Um, and <clears throat> the crews on the scene, again, we're dealing with multiple different agencies all working together uh, in concert. It was just very, very smooth. Um, from a, from a, a critical incident stress debriefing standpoint, we have had uh, resources for critical incident stress debriefing and we've had what we call hot washes which are where we discuss the events immediately after and those have been going on uh, and they'll continue and we have continued resources for first responders um, as well as others uh, available. As far as the, uh, the two patients who are in the ICU, what, what are the nature of their injuries? Is it more uh, like lower extremities I think was maybe mentioned yesterday or, or head trauma? Where, where do they stand? Uh, they have multi-system injuries so Sorry, they, they have multi-system injuries, uh, chest and lower extremity. Uh, so they require, one of them requires uh, fairly intensive uh, respiratory care. Is anyone at risk of amputation still? Nope, no, uh, all, the, uh, all the vascular uh, exams checked out very well with all these patients, so, uh, and nobody required a vascular reconstruction. So no, we, we, everyone's gonna, gonna leave with what they came in with. Obviously, ICU very serious. What is the prognosis for those two in the ICU? What's their future looking at? Uh, excellent. You know, uh, multiple rib fractures are painful. It's hard to uh, put the, the chest at rest. <laughs> you can't put your ribs up uh, on a hassock and watch TV. Uh, so it takes a while to get over rib fractures, uh, but that patient, will he will get better. The, the folks who are in the ICU that are suffering from the rib fractures, were they pinned by the car yesterday? I don't, I don't know. You'd have to ask Dr. Tollison that. Could you answer that, Dr. Tollison? Uh, I was at scene and I, I can't comment on that right now. So in, in terms of the count, we, we have a total of 18 that were here. You said two went to Boston. Were those part of the 18 or were there 20 yes. that were sent? No, oh. it was part of, part, of the, part of the 18. So 16 were treated. 
Well, the two who went to Boston were treated here, and then they were sent to Boston. Within yeah, I, 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 hours, I, did that happen? Within an hour. I can clarify on that. So, um, so the, the 18 were treated here. Five patients arrived, as Dr. Tracy said, with uh, immediate life-threatening critical uh, injuries and illnesses um, that were time-sensitive. Uh, immediate life-saving measures were undertook taken here, um, but then ultimately two patients required continued ongoing care for certain specialties and additional resources. So those two were then transported. Three patients uh, left the scene directly to uh, 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 Boston Medical Center. How many patients self-reported? Just one. When you have five people come in and you're saying they are emergency life threatening, and to have all five of those go into the column of a good prognosis, A, what does that say about what happened here yesterday? And B, how does that feel today knowing that? We have a lot of people here who have uh, long backgrounds in taking care of the injured, uh, and we uh, we can bring a lot of people to. Uh, the, uh, to the point of contact with uh, trauma patients. We, in, we not infrequently get groups of trauma patients here. Uh, it's pretty infrequent that we get this number. Um, but uh, it, it feels good. You know, we, we f I felt satisfied when I drove home last night. You know, this is a, an event that wasn't just about having surgeons and intensivists and emergency medicine guys and uh, pre-hospital people. You know, the nurses on the med surge wards came down to the emergency department and just picked up their patients who'd been admitted and brought them up to make room. Transport workers know where to go. The uh, hospital security didn't have to be told where to go. They knew exactly what to do. Everybody responded exactly as they were supposed to. And when you're in the middle of a well-oiled machine like that, it, it, uh, it can be very satisfying. So, um, yeah, it, I think we're, we're very satisfied with our performance. Um, I think uh, you know we're a very capable hospital, and we try to serve the people uh, of the South Shore as well as we can. I think we did a good job yesterday. Do you mind answering too? Sorry. Yeah, I mean, Dr. Millam and I uh, talked. We were we were uh, in charge at the time, and uh, within moments, we had uh, four trauma surgeons, uh, multiple vascular surgeons, multiple orthopedic surgeons, uh, three intensive care doctors. Uh, a multitude of physician's assistants, nurse practitioners, CRNAs, uh, I would say hundreds of additional support staff between nurses, phlebotomy, transport, environmental services, turning over rooms. Uh, we were able to very quickly uh, clear out an emergency department for what was unknown. We didn't know what the numbers were ultimately going to be, so we needed to prepare for the worst. Uh, and. Again, at no time did we ever feel as though we did not have the needed resources to care for the volume of patients that arrived. Uh, in addition, I mean, I'll just say we saw 270-ish other patients yesterday, uh, including at the same time a, a critical trauma patient that had another very critical traumatic injury that required immediate operative care uh, in the middle of all this. Uh, and again, the entire team, the entire organization here rallied together at uh, a very important moment and uh, did an absolutely stellar job. Did people show up to work yesterday that weren't scheduled just to come and lend a hand? Yes, yeah. definitely. Dr. Tullison, um, I know there's a, there's a range of emotions, uh, but can you characterize at all how, um, how the patients are doing mentally? Uh, <clears throat> I, I don't think I can answer that question just yet. Um, I can talk about the first responders uh, and uh, my colleagues who we've talked about, but from a patient perspective, uh, what I can probably say is that it's, uh, it's going to be a long road to recovery for a lot of them. That's for sure. It seems like, I, I, I think you guys kind of touched on this yesterday, but just one more time, it seems like this could have been a whole lot worse. You guys seem very prepared and the, just the fact that this, the timing of when this happened. Can you kind of just summarize the fact that you know, it, you're grateful that this, this wasn't worse and everyone that came here yesterday is likely going to survive. Yeah, I, I'll, I'll start. I think um, it, it, it was remarkable um, that we had this incident in, in, in our community and uh, many of us, you know, li live in this community and so it does touch home uh, a little bit. 
And so to see uh, the level of acuity uh, be able to be triaged, stabilized, transported, brought to definitive care in such a timely, efficient manner, um, and in my communications of being on scene saying, I got four more, Dr. Tracy says, bring it. Um, it's really, it feels great. It feels really good to do that. I'm sorry, I wasn't here yesterday. Did you go to the scene or were you there when it happened? I was, I, I, resp I responded to the scene, yes. Is that normal considering or how does that work? Well, <clears throat> the, unique, the unique thing about South Shore Health is we, we have our own EMS system. Um, we have our own ambulance system, uh, and that is uh, also a 911 system for the town of Weymouth. We're also the primary mutual aid for the town of Hingham and routinely assist them. Uh, and in my role as EMS medical director, I also uh, oversee uh, eight fire departments, uh, the police departments, and two private ambulance services on the South Shore. So it's not uncommon to see me show up to something something big. Can you just talk about your reaction as you got to the scene there? And immediately go into autopilot based on your training or what was that like? Yeah, it was, uh, it, it was a little surreal. Uh, we talk about our training um, and uh, one of the uh, courses that I've, I've taken is called Advanced Disaster Life Support and one of the final ev evolutions is a, uh, a scenario with moulage and lights and smoke and, and everything and, and I walked in there and I said, oh my god, is this a drill? Uh, this is great makeup. And then I quickly realized it wasn't. And I'll say, you know, uh, you arrive on scene, I checked in with Chief Murphy. Uh, he, he's, he pointed just where I should go. And uh, when you get, in, get into the store, uh, the strobe lights are flashing from the uh, alarm. The alarm's going off. There's a little bit of a smoke haze. And there's just glass everywhere. It's tempered glass. It's not going to cut you, but it's awfully slippery. You had to walk like you're on ice. And, so um, being able to work in that environment was, was pretty surreal, particularly in a place that I've been a, I've been a customer. Can you talk a little more about that glass? How easy <clears throat> is it to break it? And once it is broken, how sharp is it? Uh, I don't know how easy it is to break, but it's not sharp at all. It's tempered, um, so it's a safety glass. Um, so it, we weren't uh, getting cut by it, but it was definitely difficult to walk in that situation. Were there, were there a total of 14 ambulances? Is that accurate? Um, the district attorney had said 14 responded. I don't know how many you guys said. I don't have the specific numbers I, uh, on the number of ambulances. Oh, of ambulances. Yeah. yeah. We had a couple of we had a couple of crews that uh, had come and then went back for additional patients. So uh, I believe that may be where the numbers were probably a little higher. I believe in all we had sent seven of our ambulances to the scene. Uh, some seven South Shore Hospital ambulances. It's remarkable it, you never felt strained, like, oh, we, we can't handle this. I mean. No, no, it really, again, uh, the team, and this, this is years and years and years of preparation. This is program development. Uh, this is a trauma program that's been in existence for many years. It's uh, specialty services, including vascular and orthopedics and neurosurgery um, that uh, we've added to the hospital over uh, the last number of decades um, that, again, were all used uh, yesterday and through to today.